Welcome to r slash Entitled Parents, where an entitled mother attacks a naked stripper. When I was a baby, my parents rescued a dog from this animal shelter and named him Buddy. Buddy was half German Shepherd, half Golden Retriever. We called him our Golden Shepherd, and he was the perfect family dog. As the years passed, our family grew fairly larger. My parents' religion encouraged lots of children, and Buddy saw each of us and our pet rabbits like his own puppies. He would let us snuggle with him and use him as a pillow, and I think he thought he was a human since he would only walk on the sidewalk. Only lay on blankets from our beds, and chasing a ball or stick was absolutely beneath him. What a quirky boy. This story takes place when I was 12 years old, so by our best guess, Buddy was at least 13. He was old, and all the kids in our family knew to give him space and treat him nicely, just like you would an old man. We had some neighbors who didn't like us very much. They only had one three-year-old daughter and one indoor cat, so our lots of kids, mostly boys, and indoor slash outdoor dog were a bit too loud and dirty for them. They avoided us as much as possible, but occasionally their daughter would be outside playing at the same time we were, and we would invite her to play with us. On one day like this, my sister had Buddy on a leash in the front yard, drawing with sidewalk chalk with her friend. Buddy was just laying in the sunshine next to them. The little girl came out and asked if she could draw with chalk too, and of course my sister let her and didn't think anything bad could happen. The girl, being three, draws for a bit, then runs off, comes back to draw some more, then runs off again, and my sister doesn't worry about her because she's just being a toddler. After a bit, this little girl tried to climb on Buddy's back like a horse. My sister stopped her and explained that Buddy's an old man and that hurts his back. The little girl nods and runs off. After a little while of everything going fine, with the little girl running up to color and then running away, she tries to climb on his back again. My sister again corrected her, explaining that that hurts Buddy and we don't want to hurt him, so please don't climb on his back. The little girl says, okay, and runs off. This time, my sister moved to a different spot, a little ways away from where the girl was playing, and after a while, stopped paying attention to where she was. This time, the girl came back and climbed on Buddy's back a third time. Just as my sister noticed her and started to say something, Buddy growled. The growl startled the little girl and she lost her balance, fell off, and hit her face on the sidewalk. When my sister took her to her house to get her parents, they were convinced Buddy bit her. They wouldn't listen to my sister's story and insisted the scrape on the daughter's cheek was a dog bite. Even though it was clearly a wide sidewalk scrape, not teeth marks, Buddy had no history of biting. Even though he was always surrounded by kids, and my sister was there when it happened and saw the whole thing. I even rushed outside to see what all the yelling was about, saw the scrape and saw Buddy just sitting there with his head down like he thought he was in trouble. Poor old dog wouldn't hurt a fly. In a dramatic to-do, they rushed their daughter to the hospital and got her cheek bandaged up. Remember, it was just a scrape, but okay. And sought out a military police officer with experience working with attack dogs who told them that once a German Shepherd tastes blood, they'll never stop trying to kill that person. They came to us that night and demanded we put our dog down because he'll try to kill their daughter. My dad was very reasonable and understood their fear, so he said he would talk to the family and get back to them. When he told us they wanted to kill our dog, we all started crying and hugging Buddy and begging dad not to do it. My dad was a big softy, but could be fiercely protective of his family. If anyone made us cry, it was all over. The next day, he told the neighbors he believed my sister that the dog didn't bite their daughter and he was just old and trying to protect himself from being hurt by her again. They didn't take this well, and from then on, they would call their daughter inside whenever they saw us, with or without the dog, and tried spreading gossip about us with the other neighbors. Everyone else liked us though, so that didn't go anywhere. Long story short, the mean neighbors moved and Buddy lived to the ripe old age of at least 17. He died after a long battle with cancer on my 16th birthday. I went with my dad to put him down and put an end to his suffering. I didn't want him to feel abandoned on the last day of his life when he had always been such a good dog. So did anyone else notice that these parents let their three-year-old toddler daughter play outside without any supervision? Those people honestly sound like garbage to your parents. Our next Reddit post is from The Real Slim Grady. An entitled mother breaks my friend's window while she's playing with herself and a lot happens, lol. My college friend Emily called me recently to tell me something that happened like 15 minutes ago. 
Emily was alone in her apartment where she was on the ground level and had the window shades closed but the window cracked open as she told me that her central air is often broken and it gets stuffy. Important info. She was doing as this post is titled, having alone time, and was nude doing it and she said she was being very quiet. When she hears the sound of her window squeak and this young boy's face pops in through the blinds and she screams. Emily's on the other side of the room and this kid pulls out a phone and takes a picture while she's recoiled and runs off. She told me initially she was shocked and pissed, but she's used to it as she works as an exotic dancer and has a plethora of other inappropriate conduct stories and just decides to stay out of it and not get messed up in whatever terrible adult parents that child. She told me after she started again, she heard a scream of a woman outside. No, that's illegal. And what do you know, a few seconds later and rapid banging on the door starts and Emily just grabs a blanket to cover herself and goes into her bathroom. Her apartment is very, very small and essentially one room, so when what happens next happened, there wasn't much room for her to use. After prolonged banging on the door, the woman moves to the window and starts banging on that and yelling, you cannot be indecent in front of children. This is illegal and I will have you arrested, pedophile. And things of that nature, when lo and behold, glass isn't that strong and after a few colorful phrases, the woman's hand passes straight through the pane and shatters it. <laughs> she stops for a second and then pokes her head in first saying, this is not breaking property as you are the aggressor. And then she continues. Emily is very freaked out at this point and calls the cop while the woman is yelling. She told me the cops had to ask several times to repeat as the entitled mother was screaming things about abuse and how her poor baby boy will need therapy after what she showed him. She said a couple of officers would be over and she hung up. The entitled mother will not shut up and pulls out her phone and starts recording, telling her phone the story she created and informing the imaginary audience about this pervert and how she's going to get Emily on a blacklist and calling her a molester. Now, Emily is a real strong lady in my opinion. She's had to deal with a lot of entitled people and I have many stories starring humanity's most choice people, mostly nasty men. So she can be very calm and collected in these scenarios. She said she calmly walked over and tried to close the window and push the mother's head out. Her window was one of those ones with an upper and lower part and she brought the upper one all the way down which leaves maybe six to seven inches of space at the bottom. The mother screams, ASSAULT, and tries to grab Emily, but only grabs the blanket she used to cover up and rips it off her. Entitled mother sliced her arm on the broken window, and she ended up taking the curtains down with her so the window is unobstructed, and now Emily finds that some neighbors have gathered. Emily hops deeper into the apartment into her kitchen and calls me telling me this. All the while, I hear in the background the familiar sound of a horribly loud and obnoxious mother. I worked a few retail jobs and I've dealt with the worst of the worst, particularly pet owners. After a few minutes of monologue, there were distant sirens and she hung up telling me she'd call back. She said she was nervous of what might happen, but ended it saying that the worst part of this was that that woman and her child couldn't give her five minutes to finish what she started. I haven't heard much back yet, lol, but she did text me about 10 minutes ago. I can't talk much. Looking good. Officer restrained the mom. I'm in the clear? Update. So I called Emily and I got some updates. Two cars arrived at our house with three officers. One was checking the window, another was tending to the kid while the kid is crying at this poor cop's feet as the cop and another talked to the mother who apparently was yelling for a while but had calmed down a lot by now. Emily came out of her apartment after dressing herself, and one of the cops talking to the mom steps aside to get Emily's story, keeping the parties apart as to keep from affecting story retellings. She tells him what happened and asked about easy ways to deal with this without too much action. All she wanted was repair money and to be rid of the situation. The cop by the window interviews the people who are watching separately from each other, and the mother gets interviewed. Emily said she overheard her say, that slut, a couple times, but she had apparently calmed down a lot. After a while, the cops had asked Emily if she wanted to press charges as they had the witnesses, including one guy who caught the tail end of this fun fight on video. And apparently at first, the mother tried to lie her way out saying that Emily grabbed her son through the window and made him touch her. And she broke the window in defense. 
But Entitled Mother changed her story quickly to something slightly more rational about her getting upset at public indecency when she calmed down. Maybe getting nervous about lying in front of a cop? At this point, Entitled Mother was holding her sweet baby boy, caressing his head and saying sweet things. Emily only had two demands, which were one, that the photos taken were to be gone, and two, that the woman pay for her damages. Entitled Mother got very upset and teary-eyed and stammered about how she couldn't afford it, but after she agreed to the organization of a small claims tort settlement meeting, which I believe is the phraseology she used and Emily wants to aim for it within a month. The mother had seriously chilled out from where she was and was now crying intermittently. Really for no reason, my girl here was giving her a huge out. The cops took some notes and promised Emily that the photo would be wiped and that the video taken would be wiped and that they would handle it all. One officer even said that she had a lot more potential here in a case for a lawsuit and could get her a few charges off the top of his head, but she expressed her deep interest in keeping this on the DL and handling it in a way that she wouldn't have to think about it again. The officer said what a lot of you guys have told me with advice and Emily said that it seems like a good idea. At this point, she filed an official report with enough evidence showing there was no way Emily could have been at fault, and the entitled mother would be responsible. The video started around the time Emily pushed her head out, and it clearly showed the window was already broken inward, and many witnesses saying the mother broke the window. So Emily won't be responsible for injury on her own property. Emily said that she really didn't like the idea of someone having images of her when she wasn't ready or prepared, as most people would be. She lives in a small town, so people tend to be kind, and one of the officers even offered to board up my friend's window for her temporarily, which she very politely declined, as she likes doing everything herself and is a handy woman. But the gentleman gave her contact info for an inexpensive repairman, which she appreciated. The officers gave her some info and helped exchange info with Entitled Mother, and Emily just turned around to go back inside. Before she left, the mother stopped crying and she heard her say to the officer that she would pay the cost of a window and not a penny more. I did nothing else wrong. Followed by an audible sigh from the officer. She has no idea how easy she got off, having messed with someone who has way, way better things to do on her mind. I guess the moral of the story is don't interrupt a lady when she's doing very important business. Emily signed off by saying, I'm not even in the effing mood to finish. This was all such a mess. I'm so overstimulated. <laughs> I lost it at the image of this woman breaking the window, being paused like, oh, I broke the window. And her first response is to stick her head through the window so she can yell more. What a nut job. Our next Reddit post is from Dad is Alex. For clarification and understanding purposes, I have a medical condition in which my blood circulation is extremely weak. My average resting pulse is at around 45 beats per minute. When I sleep, it can go down to 30 beats per minute, endangering my life. When I'm physically active, not resting, etc., my pulse rises to around 60 beats per minute. A pulse of 70 beats per minute for me is like 130 beats per minute for someone with a normal or healthy blood circulation, so I pass out extremely easy. Therefore, I need to be super careful about my movements, actions, and stuff, or else I'll get knocked unconscious in seconds of just standing up. I never thought I'd encounter an entitled parent myself, but unfortunately, I did yesterday. It was around 8.30 in the morning. I was riding the bus to university. So I sit there on the bus, listening to music, minding my own business, when all of a sudden someone taps me on my arm. Excuse me, young man. Could you please get up? This is my son's favorite spot on the bus, the entitled mother said. I replied, what? I'm sorry, but I need this place. I, come on, there's plenty of room for you to stand. Just get up and give us a spot. I really can't. I'm sorry. If I get up now, I'll... Ugh, just get up. You seem fine. Nothing wrong with you. You're just lazy and don't want to stand. While I'm trying to explain to Untitled Mother that I have a certain condition in which I need to be careful about my movements because my pulse and circulation is so extremely weak and fragile, she keeps on screaming about how I was stealing her son's happiness and how lazy I am for not standing up for a mother and her child. I was feeling my pulse rising because of the argument and stress this lady was causing me and I got extremely anxious. I didn't want to pass out on public transport. Her son looked really uncomfortable through this whole argument and at one point tried to tell Entitled Mother to just leave me alone. 
The rest of the bus, of course, caught attention to the situation. All of a sudden, Entitled Mother grabbed my hand and tried to take my pulse. Your pulse seems fine. What's wrong with you? Why can't you stand up? Her grip was so firm, it left marks of her nails on my skin. She pulled me out of the seat, leaving me standing on the bus with an already way too high pulse for me in my condition. I tried to walk a few steps to find something to hold on to so I wouldn't fall. But it was already too late anyway, and I fell to the ground, going unconscious in the middle of a bus. What happened after that, I don't quite know. I gained consciousness laying wrapped up in a blanket on the pavement, surrounded by paramedics, the police, and the bus driver. They explained to me what happened while I was gone. The police took statements from Entitled Mother, some other people on the bus, and the bus driver, and took Entitled Mother in custody. They asked me if I wanted to give a statement now or later when I recovered, and if I wanted to press charges for the assault. And, of course, I absolutely did. All I heard from her after I woke up was just screaming in disbelief and crying. So far, it's sure that Entitled Mother's health insurance company will have to pay for the ambulance, paramedics, and other following medical bills. All public transportation for this specific line was forced to stop for three hours just because an entitled mother didn't get what she wanted. Currently, I'm in the hospital under supervision. I'll be released once they're sure my pulse and circulation is a little stronger. They know they can't cure it, but they said they'll try to make me at least a little more stable. Man, when are we as a society gonna finally realize that not all physical disabilities are visible? Just because someone looks healthy doesn't mean they aren't struggling with something, so you can't just assume. That was r slash Entitled Parents, and unless you want an Entitled Mother to attack you the next time you're having fun by yourself, then you'd better hit that subscribe button.